namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Nasta Praya Suva Badreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistaki Uh, we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 9, Text Number 4. Navayam Twa Marer Daityai Siddha Gandharva Charanai Nasprista Purvam Janino Loke shais chat kuton ribi Navayam twa marer daityai Siddha gandhar vacharanai Nas prista purvam janimo Loke shais chat kuton ribi Navayam twa marer daityai Siddha gandhar vacharanai Nasprista purvam janimo Loke shais chakuton ribhi Nah, it is not. 
vayam we twa unto you amarai by the demigods daityai by the demons siddha by the siddhas gandharva by the gandharvas charanai by the charanas na not aprishta purvam never enjoyed or touched by anyone janima no exactly loka ishai by the various directors of the universe cha also kuta what to speak of nabi by human society translation what to speak of human beings even the demigods demons siddhas gandharvas charanas and the various directors of the universe the prajapatis have never touched you before it is not that we are unable to understand your identity please repeat what to speak of human beings even the demigods demons siddhas gandharvas charanas and the various directors of the universe the prajapatis have never touched you before it is not that we are unable to understand your identity purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shrila prabhupad even the asuras observed the etiquette that no one should address a married woman with lust the great analyst chanakya pandit says matravat paradare shu one should consider another's wife to be one's mother the asuras the demons took it for granted that the beautiful young woman mohini murti who had arrived before them was certainly not married therefore they assumed that no one in the world including the demigods the gandharvas the charanas and the siddhas had ever touched her the demons knew that the young girl was unmarried and therefore they dared to address her they supposed that the young girl mohini murti had come there to find a husband among all those present the daichas the demigods the gandharvas and so on om magyana timirandasya gyananjana shalakaya chaksuran militan yena tasmai shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manobistam stapitam yena bhutale swayam rupakadamayam tadati swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Nitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dhinna Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanustate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo 
वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीहद्वैत गधाधार श्रीवास रे गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे so this chapter of shrimad bhagavatam is describing about the incarnation of mohini murti the lord comes in of course many forms this was mentioned in one verse there in seventh canto by prahlad maharaj when he is offering prayers to lord nishingadev to pacify him and he describes how the lord comes in many different species of life you know some we see today some somebody may be male but he may also be half female may not be you know 100% male is more mixed more feminine than male so we have people like that it's a very common phenomena in the world today you have people who are not really men and not really women or sometimes you call new women I was on Sankirtan one time in Bangkok distributing shop to shop and I went into one office and very good looking young woman came and she began to talk to me and she was saying yeah I used to be a man I had the operation you know so these things are there today here we see in the Bhagavatam how the Lord he's not hundred he's not always male he can appear in any different form he can come as a woman and he can come also as a fish and as a boar and half man half lion he's not limited he can appear in any different manifestation and however it's mentioned there in shrimad bhagavatam by prahlad maharaj that he describes that the, the lord is also known as tri yuga because although he comes in the kali yuga he does not reveal himself to the ordinary people and that's an important point for all of us at this particular time because we are here celebrating gor purnima and today is the occasion of jagannath mishra mahotsav because the, the lord has come as a child of jagannath mishra so he is very fortunate to be blessed with a wonderful son uh it, prahlad maharaj therefore shows that he also knew about the lord coming as lord goranga as lord chaitanya mahaprabhu prahlad maharaj mentions like this that the lord comes in his different incarnations to reestablish re the religious principles and sometimes also to remove the the demons who are giving disturb creating some disturbance in the universe so in the 11th canto we were hearing from both uh, lokana swami and shivaram swami they spoke on the verse which describes lord chaitanya's appearance there how the lord is mentioned there in the conversation between uh karabajana muni and maharaj nimi it's actually a discussion between narada and vasudev Narada Muni is giving instruction to Vasudev and he's telling him about this conversation between Maharaj Nimi and Karabajana Muni and how they had discussed about the Lord's different incarnations in different ages and it's particularly interesting to see how the qualities of the people are described in these different ages just like Prabhupada mentions here how the the demons observe the etiquette the, that they will be respectful to a married woman they will not be lusty towards towards a married woman and so some good etiquette is there even among the demons but probably today we would not find that same etiquette that it's very rare people know anything about etiquette married or not it doesn't make much difference to today's demons so in the shrimad bhagavatam karabajana muni was describing the qualities of the people in the satya yuga that they were all 
automatically Krishna conscious. Doesn't it sound wonderful? Automatically Krishna conscious. They had all the good qualities, that they were kind to all living entities, that they were not envious, and they were peaceful, and they were steady in any situation. Very wonderful qualities, Satya Yuga, like that. However, then he went on to describe in Treta Yuga, people were not quite, they were not automatically Krishna conscious, but they had a desire, they had some interest, an inclination to become Krishna conscious. They're described in the Treta Yuga, people were described as being fixed in religiosity, an expert in all the different aspects of Vedic injunctions. And then in Dwapara Yuga, then he goes on to mention that the only favorable thing about people in Dwapara Yuga was that they had a strong desire, they had, so, they had some desire to know about the Absolute Truth. But they were subject to the weakness of mortal beings. In this way, it's pointed out to us that even people in the Dwapara Yuga were in this kind of condition. What to speak of people today in this Kali Yuga? How low and how fallen, how degraded the population has, is compared to anything in the previous Yugas. So very difficult times. Therefore, the Lord has to come in a suitable form to deliver them. Just as he came to give protection to Prahlad Maharaj, and he came to protect, uh, to, to protect uh, people from the, the stealing of the Vedas, like uh, uh, Kaitaba, stealing the Vedas. So the Lord comes in different forms to protect the, the devotees from these demons. So in the same way, Lord Chaitanya came in this Kali Yuga to protect people from demonic influence, to protect all of us from the evil influences of the age of Kali. And Lord Chaitanya's appearance is described not only in the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, but it's also mentioned, there's a very important verse, which is in the Vishnu Sahasranam, which means it's stated by Grandfather Bhishma. So Grandfather Bhishma, just as I was saying, Prahlad Maharaj also knew about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. B Grandfather Bhishma also knew about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or we could say Lord in his Goranga feature. Because in the Vishnu Sahasranam, there's the verse that begins, uh, Suvarna Varno Hemango, like that. He's describing, I, I'll read it all to you. Suvarna Varna Hemango, Varnagas Chandana, Chandana Nangi, Sanyasa Krishna Santo Nishta Shanti Parayanaha. Like this, Grandfather Bhishma had come here in Navadvip. We were on the Parikrama. Those of you who went out, you will know we visited Janamuni's ashram. And Janamuni is the grandfather of Bhishma. Janamuni drank the Ganga. But then, of course, he allowed the Ganga to come out again from his knee. And Bhishma is the son of Ganga. Ganga is his mother. So Grandfather Bhishma would come and visit the grandfather, Janamuni. And he would stay here in Navadvip Dam. And he learned about Lord Garanga. Therefore, when in the Mahabharata, you'll find Grand Grandfather Bhishma speaking the Vishnu Sahasranam, and he speaks this verse, describing about the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He describes how, in his early life, he will be a householder and he will have beautiful bodily limbs. His body will be covered with the paste of sandalwood. But then 
later in his life, he will renounce. He will become a sannyasi. And he will, he will preach the message of the absolute truth. But he will be very peaceful and equipoised. And the impersonalist will be afraid of him. So this wonderful description of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is given to us by Grandfather Bhishma, showing that he also knew of the Lord coming in this incarnation. He's a confidential, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a confidential incarnation. He does not reveal himself as the Supreme Lord. We were hearing His Holiness Shiva Ram Swami described to us also how Sanatana Goswami had questioned Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu about his identity. Because Sanatana Goswami was receiving shiksha from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu was describing the, the Lord and his different incarnations and his different functions. So then Sanatana questioned Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that Yes, so the Lord, when he comes in the, he, in the Kali Yuga, he will be of a golden color and he will chant the holy name and he will encourage others also to chant the names of the Lord. Isn't this true? And in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu understood the trick of Sanatana Goswami, that Sanatana Goswami was trying to get confirmation from Lord Chaitanya, that he was actually the Yuga avatar. So when Sanatan asked him this question, Lord Chaitanya did not reply immediately. He waited for some time, indicating confirmation of a statement. But then he said to Sanatan, enough of these tricks, Sanatan. Don't try to trick me. In other words, Sanatan was trying to get Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to reveal, to, to admit that he is actually the incarnation for the Kali Yuga. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never did this. He never wanted the devotees to uh, reveal his identity as the Supreme Lord. Because he knew that in the Kali Yuga there will be many other imposters who are all coming to claim that they are God. So the Lord in this way, he's a covered incarnation. Kali Yuga, because it's so full of cheaters and cheating. And so many people claiming to be God. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not want to encourage this type of thing. Therefore, he simply presented himself as a devotee of God, the servant of the Lord. He came to show all of us how to serve. So when... Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, before his appearance, he arranges for some of his different devotees to first of all come. Of course, his mother and father have to come. Therefore, Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Mata. Jagannath Mishra is described as the son, the fifth son of seven sons of Upendra Mishra. Upendra Mishra, Upendra Mishra came from Sri Hatta. I'm told it's in Bangladesh. Maybe those of you who are going safari, you have the opportunity to visit this place. So, Jagannath Mishra came to Navadweep. The reason why he came here to Navadweep was because at that time, Navadweep was the center of learning. And he desired to study astrology and he came under the tutelage of Nilambar Chakravarti. Nilambar Chakravarti was a famous astrologer as well as of course as being a great devotee. Nilambar Chakravarti residence is over there in Bilpakur and the deity which he was worshipped by his family and by many descendants before him is still worshipped there today, Madan Gopal a very beautiful deity. So uh, Jagannath Mishra came there and studied astrology from Nilambar Chakravarti. And at that time he met the daughter of Nilambar Chakravarti. He met Sachi Mata. 
and he was duly married to Sachimata. So the couple naturally desired to have children. However, one after another, their children were dying. It's Chaitanya Charitamrita tells us that Sachimata delivered eight daughters, one after another, and they each passed away quickly. They died practically at birth. So the couple were very grief-stricken not to have a child. However, then they were fortunately blessed with a son. And that son was the incarnation of Sankarshan, Vishwarup. So he was the older brother. Uh, he came first in the, in the family of Jagannath Mishra, just like Lord Balaram comes before Krishna. In the same way, Vishwarup came and he's an expansion of Lord Balaram. And then after some time, the couple desired to have another son, another child. So Chaitanya Charitamrita mentions in the month of January, in the year 1485, the Lord entered into the mind of Jagannath Mishra. We should understand that the birth of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not seminal. It's not an ordinary birth. It wasn't through the discharge of semen. Although, if the Lord wants to, he can take birth in that way. However, it's mentioned that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not take birth in that way. He first of all appeared in the mind of Jagannath Mishra. And then from the mind of Jagannath Mishra, he was transferred into the mind of Sachimata. And that mind of Sachimata is described to be not different from the womb of Sachimata. So the child remained there within the womb of Mother Sachi for a period of 13 months. Now, usually when a woman is going to give birth to a child, the child will be in the womb for 10 months. But Lord Chaitanya, when he appeared, he was there for 13 months. So the couple were becoming worried. You could understand. It's a long time for a woman to be carrying the child. She became anxious to deliver the child. At that time, Nilambar Chakravarti came there and he checked things out. He looked at the different astrological considerations and he informed Jagannath Mishra and Mother Sachi that this child is actually a great soul. And he is waiting for a very auspicious time to take his birth. This is the difference between the Lord and us. You see, we are forced to take birth particular times. However, when the Lord appears, he can choose himself the particular moment for his appearance. Just like we were celebrating yesterday, the, the 500 and... 32nd, I think, was it 32nd anniversary of the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it's on the lunar day in the month of Falgun. And on the particular time when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared from the womb of Sachi, all of the planets were in very auspicious positions. It was a very... The, the child which would take birth at that particular moment has to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And this is confirmed astrologically. So in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, you can see that this information is all given in the purports also. It mentions how all the planets were in very beautiful positions. Even before the birth of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it is described how everything was very auspicious simply by the presence of the Lord in the womb of Mother Sachi. Mother Sachi described how she would be regularly seeing human beings who appeared to be celestial beings. They appeared in the sky and 
they were observing her and they appeared to be offering prayers even. And Jagannath Mishra described also how, how his life had changed since Mother Sachi had conceived the child. He found that whenever he would go out, people would want to give him charity. He didn't even have to approach people. They would come to him and want to give him wealth, and they would offer him clothing, they would give him paddy and other foodstuffs. Oh, this is surprising. You know, it usually doesn't happen like that. The brahmanas usually have to go and request. They go and request people, give something. Give some. But Jagannath Mishra was seeing that how people were all giving everything freely, without any request from him. It was surprising to him. So these were indications that the child which they were going to deliver was no ordinary child, but was a very great personality who was coming into their home. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, of course, at the time of the lunar eclipse. Now that is also significant because it's mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita that the beauty of the Lord, uh, that, that uh, Chaitanya Chandra, the, the, whose, his beauty is spotless, but the moon is not spotless. The moon is full of blemishes, dark colors and blemishes. So the moon was ashamed to see the beauty of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the moon of Lord Chaitanya appearing in the world. It said the moon became ashamed and covered himself with Rahu. This was the cause of the eclipse. Of course, and also the, that eclipse incurred, made everyone chant the holy name and that everyone would go to Ganga and take bath and call the holy name. One year we also had Gaur Purnima at the time of a lunar eclipse. We all went to the Ganges and took bath, chanting the holy name. It's not very common. It's the sign of the activities which the Lord is coming to inaugurate. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is appearing to inaugurate the Sankirtan movement the chanting of the holy names, the Yuga Dharma. So with the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the home of Sachi Mata and Jagannath Mishra, then they were seeing regularly different beings appearing almost in, in their home. They were surprised. So many people came to see the child which Mother Sachi had delivered. They were wondering, who are all these people? They had never seen them before. Actually, they were all the demigods coming in the guise of human beings. Just like we see here in the Srimad Bhagavatam, so many different demigods are described. And they're all anxious to meet this young, beautiful woman. Because this woman is no ordinary woman. In the verse it says, we know your identity, but actually they didn't know the identity of this girl. Mohini Murti. She's also, she was also confidential to these demons and the demigods. They could not understand her. So in the same way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in the home of Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Mata. And they also could not understand the identity of their son. They were thinking him to be an ordinary child. Even sometimes when they would call the Lord, they would hear the sound of ankle bells. But they would be surprised that our son doesn't have any ankle bells. How can there be the sound of ankle bells coming from him? He's not wearing any ornaments. They were bewildered. They thought, it must be our hearing. We must not be hearing properly. And similarly, it's mentioned how... Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would cry and he would not stop crying until the people chanted the holy name. And in this way all of the ladies, they would enjoy their pastimes with the child. 
When it came time for the name giving ceremony, at that time Nilambar Chakravarti Thakur, again he came, the parents were worried because they had actually seen footprints from their child indicate with all, all the symbols which are there on the soles of the feet of the Supreme Lord. The Lord's feet are decorated with symbols like the fish and the conch shell and the lotus and the, the, the goad which is used for controlling the elephants. All these different symbols, are all, they were all marked on the, on the soles of the feet of Nimai. So Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Mata were very concerned that these are the same ornaments, the same marks which are found on the foot of the Lord. How could they be on the souls of our child? So they requested Nilambar Chakravarti Thakur come and give a name to the child. So Nilambar Chakravarti, he did his astrological calculations and he gave the child the name Vish, Vishwambar. Vishwambar meaning one who can maintain everyone. And actually, this name was very appropriate because since Nimai had appeared in their home, there had been no problems for, Lord Jag for Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Mata. They had no economic problems, they had no difficulties, there had been no problems in society. Everything had been very peaceful in Mayapur from the appearance of Nimai Pandit. Everything was arranged automatically for them, for their well-being, for their maintenance. They didn't have to worry about anything. How was it possible? It was only due to the arrangement of the Lord himself, that he provides for his devotees. I remember some time back, there was this one person in South India who many of his followers regarded him as being an incarnation of God. So the question came to devotees in ISKCON, how is this person actually an incarnation of God? So the reply was given that if he is actually an incarnation of God, the world should not be in the present condition it's in. There is so much poverty in the world. But when the Lord appears in this world, there is no poverty. Everything is arranged. Everything is provided for the Lord and his devotees, for their maintenance, for their welfare, for their well-being. And similarly, this was also true during the times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That even though sometimes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as a young man, sometimes he would become very emotional and he would smash everything and destroy everything in the home, knock over all the grains and break all the pots of oil. Mother Sachi would come to him and fall at his feet and say, we are not rich people. You have destroyed all of our all of our." all of our stock of goods. How will we live? How will we, how will we maintain ourselves? And Lord Chaitanya simply looked at his mother and said, don't worry, mother, I will take care of everything. And in this way he went off and then later that day he returned with some lump of gold and he gave the gold to Mother Sachi and told her, use this to t replace everything. Mother Sachi was astonished. She could not believe it was real gold. She would ask five people, is it really gold? She couldn't believe it. So like this, Lord Chaitanya was showing his devotees how everything is provided by the grace of the Lord Sri Krishna. We have to simply depend on him fully. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed many wonderful pastimes as a child. Uh, uh, one of the pastimes, which is a little difficult for me, I was reading it in Chaitanya Charitamrita and I wasn't quite able to understand it, but then I spoke to 
His Holiness Bhakti Nityananda Swami, because he's Bengali, so he can read the Bengali text, and I asked him about it. So it's about Nimai as a child who ate the offering, which was uh, from the two Brahmanas, uh, Hiranya and uh, Jagadish. There were two brothers, and they were great devotees, and they were worshipping the deity of Lord Krishna. And it was Ikarasi. And Nimai was pretending he was sick. He was crying. And the, the, the chanting of Hare Krishna was not stop. He was not stopping. So he told his parents, he said, I want the offering which Jagadish and Haranya are making, are giving to their deity. I want that offering. And it was a codice. And they were offering grains for the deity of Lord Krishna. The deity doesn't fast on a codice. So Nimai was telling his parents, I want that offering. Now everyone else was observing fasting. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also told Mother Sachi, my dear mother, do not eat grains on a codice. So he was, you know, pointing out to his mother, every, to all of us, the importance of observing a codice. However, Krishna himself doesn't have to observe a codice. So these two brothers, they had prepared an offering of grains to offer to their deity. But Nimai said, I want that offering. <laughs> and they, the, so uh, Jagannath Mishra went to the two brothers and told them that he brought his child, he brought Nimai. He said, Nimai is sick. He said, the only thing will, which will cure them is if you give that offering to him. And the two brothers, they, they were happy. They said, oh, this is the fun of your child. This was actually Lord Chaitanya showing that he is actually the Lord himself. And by offering this, by accepting the offering, he was showing that he is not obliged to follow the rituals like we do on a fasting from grains on a codice. That he can take the offering which is meant for the Lord. So like this, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave pleasure to his devotees. He accepted the food which they had prepared for Lord Krishna and he ate it with great relish. And then he distributed the remnants to all of his devotees. Another pastime which took place as a child was Nimai Pandit. Uh, at one point, Vishwarup, the older brother, had gone off and taken sannyas. So after he'd left home, Jagannath Mishra told Mother Sachi that this is not good. Vishwarup has left home because he was hearing scriptures. He was educated to understand the nature of the material world. And therefore he has left home, gone away and become a sannyasi. If we allow Nimai to get education, he will do the same thing. Therefore, we should not give him any more education. Tell Nimai, from now on, he's not going to school anymore. He can just stay at home and play. And so, after, after some time, Mother said she saw Nimai was playing in the, in the garbage pit, where all the pots were, the broken pots. Because in those days, when they cooked, they cook just like they still cook today in Jagannath Puri. They cook in big clay pots. So 500 years ago, every home would cook in clay pots. And after they cooked in the pot, they would throw it out. Right? And that clay pot will go back to the earth. It's not a problem for disposal. It's not a garbage problem. It will naturally return to the earth. So Lord Chaitanya, or Nimai Pandit, was sitting there in the garbage pile, eating the things from the remnants of the pots. And Mother said, she was shocked. What are you doing in there? That's a dirty place. You'll get contaminated. Nimai began to argue with her. How can I get contaminated? These pots were offered to Vishnu. Everything offered to Vishnu is pure. But she said, anyway, these are all rejected. They're thrown there. You're not to eat this. And then another time, he was eating the earth. 
And mother said, she said, what, you are eating earth? That is, you should eat sweets. I gave you sweets. Why are you eating earth? Nimai said, well, sweet meats are also a transformation of earth. What's the difference? If I eat earth or if I eat sweets? It's one and the same thing. Mother Sachi was shocked to hear the Mayavadi philosophy. But Mother Sachi could defeat it. We hear the Mayavadi philosophy, just like Mother Sachi, she could defeat it. She said to Nima, yes, if you eat earth, you will get sick. But when you eat sweets, you'll be healthy. Just like if I give you water, if you pour water into a lump of mud, the water will be, you won't be able to store the water. But if I put the water into a clay pot, then you can preserve the water, you can drink the water. So different, it has different functions according to the transformations of the elements. They can be used in different ways. Only I said, oh, I never thought like that before. You should tell me these things before. Mother Sachi wanted the Lord, to, uh, rather Jagannath Mishra wanted him not to get education, so they were not going to send him to school. So he said, if you don't send me to school, how do I know the difference between what's pure and what's not pure? You don't want me to get education, so how can you expect me to know what's pure and not pure? If I'm sitting in the garbage, I don't know what's pure and not pure. So in this way, Nimai convinced his parents, all right, you better go to school. If maybe you have to, maybe you become like your brother, but, but you, have to get, you have to go to school, one way or another. We have to face it. So these were the childhood pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was given two names, Vishwarup and also Nimai. The ladies wanted the name Nimai. Because Mother Sachi had lost eight daughters before. She saw, so they thought, if we give him the name Nimai, this will protect him from the ghosts and spirits, from any inauspiciousness. Because the Nim tree is very auspicious. It, in, in the past, every home would keep a Nim tree in their garden. Nim, very important for toothbrushes and things like that. Nowadays, we have lost a lot of all this culture. We hope we can see it all gradually revived. Prabhupada often told us that this modern society is a failure. It's doomed to failure. We can go back to the natural life according to the teachings which are taught to us from the scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita. And then we can see how auspicious life can become, how happy we can become. Just like we're seeing how Sankirtan is so nice, it is so joyful. Chanting the holy name, dancing goes on constantly here in Mayapur Dham. There's no end to it. And everyone is fully joyful, satisfied. There's no problems, there's no scarcity. We could never imagine 10,000 people or how many people come here, I don't know. But still everyone gets prasadam, everybody is satisfied. This is all only possible by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So today we are celebrating the appearance day of Jag Lord, Lord Chaitanya appeared yesterday. And today is a feast given by Jagannath Mishra and we are praying that we can also uh, continue in the service of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to spread the Sankirtan movement to every town and village. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki. Gaur Premanandi.